the textile arts go, it's really fast and it's really simple and um, easy to kind of get good at pretty quickly. Um, we are going to do at least two different techniques today um, and then a third if we have time. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you all the different things first, but first thing we're going to be doing is working flat. And so this is a great way to make patches, little appliques, and it's great working on um, wool felt, which I think you all have little bits of because the fat, the base fabric will never fray. You can sew it down. You can also use my sweater that I'm wearing. I've actually needle felted this sort of wreath motif on because um, it was an older sweater. It had a stain on it and it had a little hole. And so you can needle felt, you can needle felt onto your sweater and try and like blend it in. Sometimes that works, um, but you can also needle felt onto the garment in, in like a contrasting way so that you get a design. Um, or again, you know, you can make fun little patches, things like that, little well, planet. Um, so yeah, and then the other thing we're gonna do are little simple forms like this little owl um, and things like this. They're essentially just shaped little balls of wool. This is a cactus. And then um, if we end up having time, I'd love to discuss how to needle felt things with appendages and how you build those up. Um, here's another little horse. You can accessorize them. And then here's a little polar bear. You can get the little paws, cute little detail. You know, it's more like sculpting than anything else. Um, so especially when you get into the animals, We'll talk a little bit about it, but um, as far as like patterns go, I don't really follow a pattern. I follow just like pictures of the animals. So you can Google a picture, things like that. Um, but first we'll get started. Um, whenever you're needle felting, what you're gonna need is some sort of soft receptive surface. So, um, if you all got the kits, you have a little sponge here with you, um, and then you're gonna have needles. Um, if you look at the needles, you may have um, different gauges. If you were to get the kit um, of what we saw here, you'll have um, three different colors. I think you guys just have one gauge, but I will just talk about the gauges because it's helpful information to have. So generally there are, here, I'll just do the, the, the YouTuber thing. Um, you'll see that there's a red, a green, and a blue. So the red needle is gonna be for um, doing coarse, loose work. Um, so when you're first starting off your project, the green is kind of your workhorse. You can use it for the beginning of your project, through the middle and then also working detail work. And then the blue is for fine detail. So any final shaping, any facial features. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we're working. Um, I do recommend having band-aids. You're not gonna get hurt, but sometimes <laughs> you will poke yourself and sometimes there's blood. Um, also, this is kind of a silly thing, but, um, have a snack or something, make sure your blood sugar is all right, because sometimes you're going to poke yourself. And I have found like, I'll be working on something and I'm like, why am I mad? Like what's going on? And it's because I've like poked myself too much. And I kind of have gotten this like weird sort of like reaction. So like, make sure you're just like in a good headspace. Don't get frustrated. Um, and needle felting is really forgiving. It's really easy to take out anything that you've put in. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to handle your fiber. So I've got a basket here of all these different colors. Um, and I invite you now to just grab any piece of fiber that you've got. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to, if it's like in a little ball, you'll unroll it 
and you'll just have your little bit of fiber here, whatever color you want to grab. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of show you how to handle the fiber. So as you look at the end of your bundle, little thing, you'll see these little wisps. And you're gonna wanna grab the wisps to get different layers, to get pieces off. You don't wanna grab too much at once. You can always add more. Um, so really the best way to kind of get your fiber out to prepare is you're gonna take your fingers against the sort of meaty part of your palm and you're just gonna lightly tug. And that's going to give you a little wisp. And let's say you wanted to blend this blue with some green. We'll take a little bit of the green. And again, I'm just going to kind of pull and get a little puff out. And then we can put these together. And you can sort of just pull and lay it back together and pull. And now you're not gonna get like a perfect smooth blend new color. It's gonna be a little bit streaky. It's gonna be a little bit um, heathered, kind of multi-tonal. And that can be really nice because it's gonna give you a lot of dimension. You can also kind of roll it up lengthwise and pull and pull. So that's sort of just the beginning of how we're gonna work, just getting our fibers out. If you like the colors you have, you obviously don't need to blend them. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of how to use the fiber. And you wanna, you wanna keep it light and you wanna keep it wispy. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to do a patch um, on some needle felt where we'll have a background color just so I can show you how to build up a background. And then we'll do a little bit of detail on top of that. Um, so I have a piece of felt here. Um, it's obviously much larger than I need. I'm gonna adjust my camera. So you're not gonna see me so much as you'll see, let's see if my tripod will hold it. How's that angle? Is that all right? I'm gonna bring it more over here. Whoops. Oh, cool. So I'm going to take my color that I blended and I'm just going to fill in a space that's going to be the background. So what I'm going to do is we're going to work in cross hatching. So I'm going to have this bundle and again, I'm going to pull out the wisps like that and I'm going to lay it down. And that first, you know, it doesn't look like there's a lot there, but building thin layers is going to be more effective than building up heavy layers. So I'm gonna pull another little wisp and you can also sort of like tease it open a little bit. And I'm gonna lay that crosswise from that first wash that I put down. And now I'll do a third and kind of, again, sort of every time you lay down a little bit, you'll adjust the angle. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna guarantee that you're getting a nice solid fill. So I'm going to take my red needle. Again, I don't know if you have different gauges, whatever needles you have are gonna be good. And we are gonna start working the background in. Now, I always recommend to start from the center out rather than the in the outside in, because this way it's going to guarantee that you're getting a nice even amount in. And so we're just going to start poking. And it's noisy. You just get used to it. And I kind of go in a circle. And then I come back in to the center. And you just keep working it. And as you can see, it's starting to get filled in. Now, let's say I know that I wanna do roughly a circle. I have all this fuzz out here. You have some options. 
you can cut off the fuzz, but what you could also do is sort of fold in the fuzz and kind of tack it in. And then work it in. Now, like with anything, it just takes practice to kind of figure out how to finesse the fiber. Materials, no matter what you're doing, what kind of artistic practice, your materials are kind of gonna tell you how they wanna be handled. So we're just gonna work this until it's a bit, little bit more solid. And I'm also working in the edges, shaping it so that it's going to be what I want. Now, you don't want to work it all the way to the to the like fully um, worked felted. You can see this is really nice and flat. Um, you get that flatness, you wanna kind of achieve that flatness once you have all the details in, because that way no, no part is more overworked than the other. If you pull your piece of fabric up, you'll see that we've actually started to get some of the wool coming through onto the other side. That's good, that's what we want. That means that the fiber is getting in there nice and locked in. And so let's say that we've got this, I'd say this is about three quarters of the way worked to the level of feltedness that I want it to be. So now I'm gonna start putting in a little detail. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm just gonna do a simple little polka dot kind of thing. So I have a wisp here. And the thing about needle felting is that you really need less, you very often need less than you think you're going to need. So what I'm going to do is I have this small little wisp right here. And I'm kind of just going to like roll it up a little bit. So. I have a sort of little loose, not quite a ball, but round-ish. And I'm gonna lay that on my little patch. And again, I'm just gonna start working it from the center of where I want that form to be and working it out. It's also important to work the outside edges so that if you, you know, it doesn't get all sucked in. Um, it is possible to suck everything in. Now, as I'm doing this, let's say I changed my mind and I don't like that yellow anymore. So all you have to do is you just pull it out until everything's worked in nice and tight. It's really easy to take things out and you can't even tell that it's been in there. But I am, have no problem with that little yellow guy being in there. So I'm just gonna work it back in working in pieces like this that are already felted doesn't work very well but I think it's gonna work just fine cool so now we have a blue green square a circle with a little yellow polka dot um let's say we want to make it like a flower or something we're gonna give it some orange petals. What you can also do, rather than forming the shapes on, on your piece, you can actually make pieces of felt essentially by laying down your fiber in a crosshatch pattern directly on your sponge. And you can kind of fold in that tail too. And just start working this. 
can kind of use your needle to bring in the, the little fuzzies on the edge. Pick it up, flip it over, work it from the other side as well. I like to use this kind of technique when I'm wanting to get a really defined shape, um, like multiple defined shapes. So if we're doing petals, I'm gonna want the petals to be roughly the same size. So what we have here is this sort of like three quarters of the way worked bit of felt. And we're actually now gonna cut them into our petals. I'm just gonna grab some scissors real quick. So I'm just gonna cut this in half and then we'll just do four petals. So I have these sort of roughly similar shaped pieces and we're now going to work them into our little patch. And we'll do them one by one and now I've made these shapes, I've left these shapes larger than I ultimately want them and only just roughly in the, the shape that I want them to be. We're gonna work them into the proper size and shape that we're looking for as we're working this in. Now, since this is a little bit more detailed, I am actually gonna switch my needles. So I'm gonna go to my medium gauge, the green one, and I'm gonna start by, I know the most important thing visually for this is that the petal is attached to the center of the flower. So I'm really gonna focus there to start. And once that's in, I'm gonna go down the center of the petal and then work in the sides. And you're gonna work it until it's roughly about as tightly felted as the background. So things are still fluffy, things are still kind of swirly um, and you can take anything out at any point at this point. Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna work my second petal. Again, sort of focusing at that anchor point because it's most important that it's touching the center of the flower. And then I'm going down the middle and then I'm working the sides. And you know, this part's hanging over. You can cut that with your scissors. You can also just work it in. And again, so you can see the difference. Like this is the piece that we started with. And now that it's worked in, it's much more detailed. Sometimes it'll kind of fight you. You just gotta keep working it. This one's fighting me a little bit, but you know, you just gotta keep going for it. Sometimes coming at an angle helps. You can gently tug and push um, the fiber in the direction you want rather than always going up and down. You wanna be careful with that though, because you can break the needle. These needles break. It's not uncommon, especially if they keep getting frequently bent. Um, that just tends to weaken the metal and they'll snap. Um, 
but you know, if you ever run out of needles, we sell them here in the shop. Um, so you can, they're easily replaced. And we sell um, multi-packs, but then also you can get a pack of just the red ones, just the green ones, just the blue. I think y'all in your kit have the star shape. We do also sell those. The idea of the small, the star shape is it's the same gauge as the green. Um, these are triangular. Um, if you were to look at the needle with the little barbs, um, the star shaped ones have, um, it's a star shape. So it's got five corners rather than three with the little barbs going on it. And the way these needles work is if you were to look at them, you'll see that there are tiny little barbs and um, those little barbs are what's pulling the wool fiber into itself and letting it tangle and felt. So if you look, we've got a little flower. Our background is kind of starting to pull away from the edge. That's common, don't worry about it. That's why you kind of want to work, set things a little bit larger than you ultimately want them to be. Um, just because as things work, and things sh um, shrink a bit. Now, there are two ways to get lines. The first way to get a line is using your fiber. So you're gonna take a wisp, just like before, I have this dark brown here. And what I do is I um, will get some moisture in my hand. So I just kind of like lightly breathe into my hand. So I know in COVID times, we don't wanna get our breath on our hands, but you know, just wash your hands. Um, and you're just gonna work it just like this. And the heat and the moisture from your hands is gonna help pre-felt it a little bit. And so now we have kind of a solid-ish little worm of fiber. And so we're gonna just give it uh, maybe, you know, this is a, a blossom on a branch or something, more of like a twig. I'm leaving a bit of a tail here because this is a little like finer on the edge than I want the line to be. So I'm actually going to work a little bit deeper down and I can just trim that and work this in. That is one way to get a straight line here. I'll show you how it looks. So now our stem has a little bit of a, our flower has a little bit of a twig coming off of it. That's one way. Um, and you know, you can work this thinner if you want it. You just sort of tug and tack. But another option is, I'm just gonna pull that out is to use yarn um, and especially what's called a single ply yarn. And what a single here, what a single ply yarn is, is it's just really like one piece of yarn rather than several twisted together. And I find these give, using a, a piece of pre-spun yarn gives me a really nice detailed straight line. Fantastic for outlining. And you know that line is gonna be nice and consistent throughout the whole thing. Unfortunately, this piece of yarn that I'm using is blue, so it's blending in a little bit, but I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see. So I really love using yarn um, for any kind of outline work. It's so fast and it looks really, really nice and sharp. So I'm gonna just trim this. And I'm gonna give it a little border. I've got some heavy yarn here. I'm gonna just start to work around to give it just a nice little outline. So I'm starting at the tail and I'm gonna work around. I've cut a piece of yarn that's way longer than I'm gonna need because that's gonna guarantee that I don't run out. 
and I kind of work a bit and then I work back. And as you practice and you do this, you're gonna end up developing a feel of what works, what's gonna stay together. So again, you go a little bit forward and then you work backwards. A little bit forward. And now I've kind of completed the circle. I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit. Cut it. And now that we have pretty much all of our detail or motif in, we're just going to work it all in until it's as tight as we want it to be. You can keep working this until it's all in and all ready to go. But so we don't run out of time, I'm just gonna stop it here. And you can see we've got a cute little flower, little patch. You know, this is so great. You could do like ornaments, um, any kind of little detail. You could do a little trivet or something, super cute. Um, I want to show you how we're gonna build forms now. So doing a little owl or like this little cactus or something is a really fun, simple way. And it's much more sculptural. Working three-dimensional is a little bit different than working flat. Um, so we're gonna get started with that. Um, you're gonna build your core with wool. Um, I generally recommend getting an inexpensive, we have different qualities of wool. Um, and you don't want to use your nice expensive dyed stuff because you're not going to see it. It's on the inside. So you save your nice stuff for your details and you're going to take your wool that's just undyed, you know, nothing special. And even the rougher wools are, are better for that kind of thing. So I'm going to take a big clump, tear it off, and let's make this owl a little buddy. So I know that I want it to be roughly this size. So I'm going to make a form that's at least one and a half times larger than what I want it to ultimately be. So I have this fiber and I'm just gonna tuck in the tail and I'm gonna start working it. So I've got this sort of amorphous blob. I'm gonna take my large gauge needle, the red one, and just start Okay, you just got to start getting it together. And I'm even going to fold that piece and start working that. And you know, at first it might seem like nothing's happening. It's really easy for it to come apart. You just need to keep working it. Pick it up, turn it around. Working three-dimensional is where it gets much more likely that you're going to poke yourself. So, you know, be patient. Just accept that it's going to happen. And you can see it's starting to come together, starting to get a little bit tighter. And you can always, like what I'm about to do now, I'm just going to kind of tuck in. And I'm going to take that fold and sort of wrap around it and then tuck in. And work it in some more. So I have a kind of mediumly dense, like at where I've worked it a lot, it's starting to get a little bit more dense. I'm just gonna tuck a little bit more in and you can see how close my fingers are to the needle. So you really wanna pay attention, you know, don't look away and talk to somebody or something, just talk to them without looking at them. <laughs> 
So I kind of have a form that is halfway felted, roughly in the shape that I want it, but definitely larger than I want the ultimate shape to be. Um, but this is the point at which it's time to start wrapping the shape in its color. Um, I don't have any more white that I wanna use. So we're gonna do maybe like a little beige owl. There's probably some owls. We could do like a barred owl. So we'll do a little brown to start. So I have my wisp and what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of pull it apart nice and loose, tease open any like chunks and you're gonna lay it on your form and you're just gonna start wrapping around it. And now this again is where it's really important, you know, thin layers are gonna be better than thick layers. And again, we're gonna do a kind of cross hatching. So I have this one going this way. Now I'm going to take a clump and have it going crosswise. And it's more or less covered. I do have some things here, but we can cover those up later. We're gonna just start working it. And I'm gonna start at where the kind of ends begin. And I'm using my coarse needle and I'm gonna start just working in the color layers. And while you're working in the color, you're also gonna wanna kind of think about the overall form and see where it's gonna be. So looking at this, I think I'm gonna make this the head and this the base. So you can kind of plan as you go. The shape is gonna tell you what it is. So you just work it in lightly. And again, just like on the patch, as we're laying these colors down and working in these sort of early stages, you don't wanna get it all the way felted until you're putting in your details. Because the wool, can just keep compressing and compressing and compressing. So once that first layer is nicely tacked in, it's not fully felted. It kind of looks like a weird potato. Um, we'll lay down some more color. So like here, we've got that bald spot. I'm just gonna lay it right there. And we're going to start to work where we really want to focus the fiber to be. So I am just going to play, you know, work that in. And I'm holding it in my hand, which is dangerous. Do it at your own discretion. But sometimes when you're working 3D, it's just better to hold it in your hand and work slow. If you ever, you know, you're working these kinds of things and you're feeling impatient, you just got to slow it down, take a deep breath, maybe step away. Because it really does hurt when you poke yourself. It's not nice. So now we've got that kind of bald spot worked out. And, you know, this area is looking a little streaky, little chunky. So I'm going to lay down another little piece. And you know what, that was too thick. So I'm gonna take a little bit off. Get a little more wispy. I'm gonna lay it down. And again, begin the poking where you want that fiber to really lay. And you work sort of from the center out. Okay, my phone keeps giving me a low battery warning. So I'm actually gonna just quickly pause 
I'm still gonna talk, but I'm gonna see if I can get uh, a charger down here. Just a great. Okay. I don't think it'll die or anything, but I would hate for us to get disconnected. So I have a nice, pretty decent uh, layer of that beige on top of the white. I can still see a little bit, but since I'm gonna do a little bit of a barred owl and that's sort of a dimensional brown that they have, I'm gonna take some of this dark brown and working in really thin, wisps. I'm going to take my medium gauge and just start to work that in. When you're working forms like this at the stage that we're at right now, it's really easy to see the needle pokes. Don't let that discourage you. Um, they will, as you work the form tighter and tighter, those will go away. So again, this is just like a wash of color that we're putting on just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. It's really, really looking like a potato. So, you know, maybe you have someone in your life that like loves potatoes or hates potatoes and you want to troll them, make them a potato. Why not? Make some easy, amorphous, blobby vegetables, make some weird creatures, say that they're some sort of monster or something. You know, you are the artist. You can just say that everything <laughs> is just whatever you want it to be. And so right over here, there was a little bit of clumping and a bald spot from the brown. So I'm just gonna tug it over and bring it in a little bit. Oh, see, got myself. Not too bad, but just enough. <laughs> And I've got just a little bit left here to cover up. kind of looks like a little bit of a funky comb over or something. <laughs> but now that we have our form and we have the color more or less laid out, we're going to start to um, intensify the felting while also forming the shape of what we're going for. So keeping track of what's the base I'm going to work the base really nice and flat. So I'm just going to kind of go in. I'm using my coarse needle. Getting that nice and flat. And then I'm just going to start working up. And the coarse needle gets things moving in really quickly, which is nice when you're trying to just get the form going. And I'm working from the bottom up. And you can see it's like still kind of puffed up here, but starting to get a bit tighter down there. That's what we want. It's good.
So I've worked up to the part where I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the head start. So we are really going to start to work in here and you can push in quite a bit just to get a little definition. They don't really have a defined neck, but they do have a defined area where their head goes. So you can kind of work that in. And I'm gonna keep the head a little bit more open because um, when we work in the face details, we don't want the face to get too felted. So I'm gonna leave that loose for now. Now it's starting to look a little bit more mushroomy, kind of like if anybody knows like the porcini mushrooms, they've got really solid, base so you know once you move from potato stage you can move into mushroom stage you know um just do all the vegetables make a cornucopia so i have this sort of bird s <laughs> if you squint shape it can stand up on its own and um at this point is when I would continue to work the body a little bit tighter and get the head a little bit more shaped. But I wanna show you how to make things like wings and the little feet before we run out of time. So I'm just gonna take the body, set it to the side, and we're gonna make wings very similar to the way we made the petals. So we're gonna work those separately off the body so I have my tan base and I'm going to just work, put, lay down a little bit of our darker brown and we're going to make a wing. So I'm going to use my medium gauge for this and I'm going to work a form that's bigger than I want it to be, but I'm going to work it in. And what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna work here, but I'm gonna leave a significant amount of fuzz unfelted. Picking it up from time to time and kind of tucking and folding is also gonna help. Just getting things done. And you don't really need to focus on felting it into a shape um, because we're gonna trim it, we're gonna shape it. So this is the technique that I use, working it off the form is what I use for wings, for the feet, for the tail, even the beak. So I now have a piece of felt that is worked in the center area, kind of loose on the edges. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim it roughly into the shape that I want. Again, a little bit larger than I want it to ultimately be. I'm gonna work it just a little bit more because when you cut it, it sort of exposes the edges. And so then those are loose and floofy. And now you're gonna want to work the wing or any of these little add-on pieces. You're gonna wanna work them at this stage to the level of felting that you want. I'm gonna see if I can get use my red one to get it going a little faster. So it's a little streaky on the wing, but that's okay. And the edge is a little funky, so I'm just gonna trim her up a little bit. And now we have a nicely densely um, felted wing with some fuzz. And so we're gonna take the the fuzzy area, and we're just going to attach, lay that on the body, and we're gonna felt the fuzz into the body. So now it's got a one, one little wing, little less potatoey, little less mushroomy.
And so there. Um, when you get to the face or anything like that, you're going to start shaping it in. And this is where looking at photo references is going to be really helpful because that's what's going to determine it, it looking like an owl, it looking like what you want. Like this polar bear looked like a dog until I figured out looking at pictures where the eyes need to be set. Thank you. Charger has arrived. Um, <laughs> where the eyes need to be set in proportion to um, the snout and the shape of all of it. Um, you know, once I got this little owl's eyebrow area nice and flat right here, um, yes, was what really turned it from just like some sort of random bird into an owl. Um, and you can see here that I got the wings attached like this, little tail, same way we got this wing attached um, in the feet as well. Um, here we go, here we go. <laughs> getting the charger attached. Uh, thank you, you are a lifesaver. It's working. <laughs> um, great, so yeah, so we've got that. Um, we have like 10 minutes left. I don't know, do we wanna open up to questions? or anything, Ruby? I don't know. Yeah, let's open up to questions. Okay. We've gotten cool. um, quite a few. Just turn Great. the video back on. Um, okay, so uh, let me go all the way back. Oh, I personally had a question about, yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> is it possible to unfelt something that oh, you yeah. felt it and kind of worked uh, quite a bit? less so like let's take this little snake of fiber i made when we were doing the little flower patch um it depends on how felted it is um but you know give it a try just sort of tease it out pull it apart see what you can do sometimes you just need to reduce it back down to the wisps so yes but like cool. if it's a sweater that went through the dryer or something <laughs> No, <laughs> not a lot. Of okay. <laughs> Some people have tried getting um hair relaxer, and that will actually Whoa. help a little. Okay. But we don't sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it smells like sulfur. So there's that. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I had a question about um for the center of a three dimensional form. Mm -hmm. Can you use polyfill instead of wool? I wouldn't. I wouldn't because what the wool is doing um, when you're felting it is, so the wool has scales just like our hair does. And um, when you're felting, it's locking those scales and the fibers in together. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that polyfill would um, work in. I mean, you could absolutely try it. I've never tried it. Um, so it's hard to say, um, but I don't know. I mean, like, I, I know that like polyfill definitely can like get really matted and worked mm -hmm. in. Um, so it's definitely worth trying, but I'm not sure if it would work. Gotcha. Um, I have done that and it did work. Oh, it did? Oh, oh great. Okay. Fantastic. Um, we have a couple questions about what you do with the, um, back of the patch once oh. you've yeah kind of uh, finished it know. up yeah so it's kind of fun so this is the front little kitty oh and here I use the yarn um for detail um yeah so it's a little fuzzy um you can like trim it if you want um if it's going to be something that's like a coaster or something that like, if you were gonna sew it on, you don't need to worry about the back at all. If the if it's fully felted, it's all gonna stay in. But if it's a coaster or a trivet or something that's not gonna be attached to something, you could take an additional piece of felt and sew that down, you know, just as a backing. Mm. Um, you could lightly get it a little bit wet with a little soapy water and sort of work that in and felt it a little bit more on the back. But um, it's pretty secure in there, you know, like, it's easy to kind of pull out a little bit, but it gets to a point in the felting where you, it doesn't really come out. Cool. Um, let's see what else we've got. 
a robin that I made a long time ago. Oh, cute. Oh, wow. I have little wire legs I attached and beads for the eyes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you know, if, if, if anybody's interested in doing the like three dimensional forms with appendages, I'd be happy to do another thing where it's just the 3D. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we have a question about, um, do you, oh, I'll do this other one first real quick. Um, yeah. Where can you get small amounts of roving wool? Oh, so um, we sell um, these little packs. We're actually out right now, but we do have um, these multi-packs where you can get two sizes and they're just little bits of color. Um, so yeah, we have them. Um, you know, if you, uh, you know, you're needing something sooner or anything like that, you know, if you were to just um, Google like needle felting supplies, you would be able to find it. But um, yeah, we do sell small packs of little bumps awesome. of color. Mm -hmm. And then I have a couple questions about um, like artists to follow or mm. like online tutorials if people really want to dig more into it. Yeah, I actually like don't know any like off the top of my head, but <laughs> I do know like if you were to get onto like Instagram or Facebook or anything and just like looked up the tags of needle felting or anything like mm -hmm. that, people are doing incredible stuff. I mean, they, they, they are like making animals that look real. Um, <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately I don't know anybody's names off the top oh, of my head. Okay. I'm sorry, but yeah, I mean, there's a ton of it out there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question about, um, what the cost of the wool and needles is, if you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, the basic starter kit, um, that's got like the, the sponge and the needles um, is I believe 15. We have a larger one that has a larger sponge and needles and the bits of fiber. That's 25. Um, off the top of my head, the packs of needles are like less than five to $10 each. Um, and then the wool, um, the we have the, the just the basic natural, um, undyed. Um, I think the least expensive is going to be about $8 for half a pound. And that's a lot of wool. So I was going to say wool is very light. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, the, the, we have larger bumps of what's called Coriadale fiber. It's a specific breed and we have lots of colors in that. And those are $9 a bump and they'll be, like a quarter pound of fiber. So it's a lot more than what you'll need for like small amounts of felting. But if, you know, a group of your friends or you want to do a little like um, kit to give out to people or something like that, it's about that much. So um, I know that the, um, the gumball pack kits, I think the larger is 13 and I think the smaller is um, five to 10. Cool, thank you. Um, oh, uh, how do you care for a sweater that you felt it onto kind of like the one you're wearing? Like, I'm assuming oh, you can't yeah. just throw that in the wash. No. And I wouldn't, even if I hadn't felt it onto this, I wouldn't throw it in the wash. Um, everything can always be hand washed. Um, so me personally at home, what I do is I fill up a sink with warm water and, um, we sell wool wash. I use shampoo sometimes. Um, if it's like a particular spot that you're trying to get out, um, you know, you don't want to work any one area too much because then mm -hmm. that will pill it or felt it. Um, so hand washing. Um, and then, you know, if your washer has like a spin cycle that you can just like directly turn it towards, I'll throw my items in there just for the spin cycle to just get the excess liquid out. So it dries a little bit faster, but, gotcha. um, Everything can be hand washed. And as long as you're not like agitating it a lot, it should be fine. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's all of our questions. Okay. Um, thank cool. you so well, much for doing yeah. this. This was so cool. This was so fun. Yeah. And um, like I said, you know, like you can, everyone's welcome to come on down to the shop. We do have some felting kits right now that we just got in. I'm just going to show you. 
We've got this one for some little oh, ornaments. It's so cute. And this is going to have the um, sponge, and, oops, the sponge, fiber, everything you'll need to do it and some instructions. We also have a little sheepy guy. I don't know if it's oh, hard cute. to see. And um, blending tools. We've got all different kinds of tools and even some books um, on needle felting. And you know, if you're ever working on something, I'm here Thursday through Sunday. Um, and so if you're like working a form or something and you're having trouble with it, just come on down. I'd be happy to see what you're working on or anything awesome. like that. So yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. No, um, I'll, I'll have the recording out in probably tomorrow or Monday. So great. Cool. Great. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks everybody.